Then I explained the motorcade, that's where we left off. I told you about the lead car. And so tell me, Sandra, if you would, please, who is driving the lead car of the motorcade? Jesse Curry. Jesse Curry. What was his position? What was he? Police chief. Very good. Who else was in the car there, Allison? Um, Sheriff of Dallas County, Bill Dallas. Okay, and Jay Lynn, who else was in there? And he was? Um, Secret Service Very good. And Emma, who was the final member of that car, lead car? Okay, and what did he do? He was a former Secret Service agent, but he planned the entire murder. Okay, very good. Okay, this is going to be a very primitive drawing, but a very good one. Anybody tell what that is so far? See, it's a yeah, bird's eye view of the limousine. Okay. All right. The presidential limousine was next in line. Okay? And driving the car, okay, was Secret Service agent Bill Greer. He was driving the car. Car going this way. So Bill Greer, Secret Service agent Bill Greer was, Greer was the one that drove the limousine. And sitting next to him in the front seat was another Secret Service agent by the name of Roy Kellerman. Roy Kellerman. Bill Greer and Roy Kellerman were the Secret Service agents in the presidential limousine. Bill Greer drove while Agent Roy Kellerman sat in the front seat. And you're going to see more about Roy Kellerman as we get through this process. Okay? Now, this is one of my prized possessions, if I can find it over here anywhere. But this took me a lifetime to get. This is Roy Kellerman, this is William Greer, this is signatures of both. And they took a lot of heat after this for the president's assassination, which we'll talk about later. But they actually were the ones in the front seat. In the jump seats, they called them at the time, were Texas Governor Connolly and his wife Nellie. Now, Nellie. Connolly was on this side of the car behind Greer and Governor Connolly, John was behind Kellerman in what they called jump seats. Okay? Jump seats. I'll be right back. Write that down. Jump seats. Okay, behind Nellie Connolly in the back seat of the limousine was Jackie Kennedy. So Jackie Kennedy is here. And behind John Connolly in the back seat was President Kennedy. And this is just kind of a, a bench kind of thing I'll show you. Here's a model of, of where they were sitting. Be very careful of this please. But anyway, this is what it looked like here. Okay, and I'll kind of pass this around if you promise not to break it. But that is the positioning of the presidential motorcade. Now, the thing I forgot to mention about Roy Kellerman is he was the head of the presidential detail in Dallas for President Kennedy's visit. He was the head of the presidential detail in Dallas. He was the man given all the orders. That's Roy Kellerman. That's Roy Kellerman, yep. Now keep in mind, so you don't get confused, that when Lawson, Winston Lawson planned the motorcade route, Secret Service agent, and Forrest Sorrells was in charge of the advance team to Dallas, but the agents in Dallas that day were under the charge of Roy Keller. Now, between the lead car, I want to say the lead car is real small. Between the lead car and the presidential limousine were motorcycle police, and behind were motorcycle police.
And two of these motorcycle police that were stationed on sides of the limousine were James Cheney and Bobby Hargis. So two of the motorcycle police officers that were in the motorcade on either side of the limo, two of those were James Cheney and Bobby Hargis. Okay? They'll come into play here in a minute. Save you some writing here. Uh, Bobby Hargis and James Chan. I think they're on your ID sheet. Okay, so you can picture it so far. Now, we'll kind of look at this diagram. You can keep it instead of writing this stuff down. But right behind the presidential limousine was a vehicle full of Secret <laughs> Service agents. And you can see it on the sheet, including Clint Hill. Also in the Secret Service vehicle behind the president's limousine were Kenneth O'Donnell and David Powers. They were both in the Secret Service vehicle with the Secret Service. So you have the lead car, you've got the presidential limousine, you've got the Secret Service vehicle. Behind it was another limousine that carried Vice President Johnson, Mrs. Johnson, and Senator Yarborough. So they did get him in the same vehicle. Okay? So those are the first four, lead car, presidential limousine, secret service vehicle, and then another limousine with Vice President Johnson, Mrs. Johnson, and Senator Yarbrough. Who was with David Powers, another one of his aides, David Powers. Okay? Now, if you look at the diagram, it doesn't matter too much after that. I'm not going to quiz you on what the rest of the lineup was, but I think it's important you know you had a car from the telephone company there in case they needed to make any correspondence. You had convertibles with photographers, cameramen, members of the press. You had cars with members of Congress in it. You had a bus, a couple of buses with White House press representatives. You had a Signal Corps car. Western Union car, the United States Army's entire system of communication on a mission was in that car. And you had a couple of extra cars in case one of the cars broke down. And then you had the police, a police car. So it was quite a long motorcade ride. But obviously the purpose of that motorcade was the first four or five vehicles. Okay? So that's what the motorcade looked like. Okay, I believe that takes us to our next subtopic, which is what? A motorcade through downtown Dallas. Page 29. Okay, that'll take us to our next subtopic then, which is the motorcade through downtown Dallas. So where is the presidential limousine located right now? As we speak, so to speak, in the lecture. It's at Love Field at the airport. And again, it's scheduled to follow an 11-mile route through downtown Dallas to where is it going to end up stopping? The trademark, where the president's going to give a luncheon speech. Now, you don't really have to write this down, but the president motorcade traveled down what was called Mockingbird Lane, then it went on to Lemon Avenue, it turned onto Turtle Creek Boulevard, Cedar Springs Road, onto Harwood Street, and then it turned onto Maine. And that's where we'll start. And I'll give you a diagram tomorrow of all the Southern. But the main thing was getting on Main Street, okay, on Main Street. Now, once they got to Main Street, it was gonna take them 15 minutes to get to the trademark. So a majority of the motorcade was between Love Field and Main Street. Okay, Love Field and Main Street. So just so you know, the motorcade was going to follow an 11-mile route through downtown Dallas to the trademark where the president was going to speak at a luncheon. 
they would, would travel down several different streets and lanes and avenues and then eventually the key was they were going to get on Main Street and once they got on Main Street it was going to take about 15 minutes to get to the trademark so a majority of the motorcade had happened prior to hitting Main Street is the point I'm trying to get to you okay so we'll back up and, and go on our timeline at 11.45 a.m. the presidential motorcade departed from Love Field heading towards down, down, downtown Dallas. 11.45, the presidential motorcade left Love Field. Began its 11-mile journey to the trademark at 11.45. At 11.50, as the motorcade's going down one of the streets, there's a group of small children and they're waving a sign that says, Mr. President, please stop and shake our hands. So as he's going down his motorcade route, he looks off to his right, and he sees a group of school kids waving a sign that says, Mr. President, please stop and shake our hands. So what does the president do? He halts the motorcade to a complete stop, and shakes hands with all those little tykes that were out there with the sign. And during this lecture, I'm going to give you several quotes that people stated, and you really don't need to write the quotes down unless I tell you to, but I want you to get the story. So, Governor Connolly was later quoted as saying about this moment, he said, quote, There was one little girl who was carrying the sign. He just told the driver to stop, and of course, he was immediately mobbed by a bunch of youngsters. So they were thrilled to death, and you'll see kind of a portrayal of this on video. But he stopped the thing to a complete stop. Can you imagine what the Secret Service is thinking? Well, the motorcade continues, and then at 12 noon, he looks to the right, and guess what he sees? Another group, but this time it's a group of Catholic nuns that are just standing. They're not waving a sign, but he looks to the right, and he sees a group of Catholic nuns, and that's at 12 noon. Well, what does he do? Stops the motorcade again and shakes hands with the sisters. And again, the Secret Service is at this point thinking, holy smokes. We're getting kind of nervous, didn't like the way things were going. Now here's an idea. The crowds were so large in, on, during this motorcade ride, a route, especially in downtown Dallas, they were 20 people deep. So that would be like, like taking 20 of you and getting you back to back to back from the curb into the street, okay? So these people were 20 deep in the street as the president was coming down. Now if you think of a road, and here's the main street, and of course it's not two lane, it's, you know, it's basically like this, and you've got 20 deep into the street all the way around, what happens is they got so nervous that they made the motorcade drive to the far left so most of the motorcade route was driven on this side to do what the protect the president from the crowd well who do they put at risk when they do that jackie. jackie i mean jackie's within touching distance of people in the street but they even because they were concerned about the president's safety they actually uh had the motorcade drive on the far left side of main street and i'm talking about main street now which, which actually put Mrs. Kennedy in a dangerous position, but that was their choice at the time. And this, you know, you look, you're going down Main Street, there are open windows, people climbing up on signs and statues. I mean, there are people everywhere, open windows galore, people 20 deep in the streets. And the heat of that moment, one Secret <coughs> Service agent allegedly blurted out, quote, hell, you can't keep the President of the United States in a steel box. I mean, he was doing everything he could not purposely, but he wanted the crowds. It was an election year. I mean, these Secret Service guys never had a chance. If you think about it, they're lucky something didn't happen prior to when it did. I mean, if anybody had an opportunity, there was plenty of opportunities once they got, especially once they got on Main Street. Now, the crowds were less, they were more sparse and you know, during this route until they got on Main Street. But if you've ever been in Dallas, and I'll show you pictures, it's, you know, it's, it's a tall building and pretty narrow double road street. So 20 people deep made it very impossible. It was incredible. 
Well, at the end of the 11 mile route, the parade was heading down Main Street towards an area we know as Daly Plaza. Daly Plaza. I'm going to give you a couple of handouts here that will explain real specific what Daly Plaza looked like. Okay, so they're heading down Main Street and towards, remember they're going towards the trademark, they're heading down Main Street and they come upon an area known now and, well, even then in history as Daly Plaza. It's on your ID sheet, I believe, is it not? D-E-A-L. So they're heading down Main Street toward an area known as Daly Plaza. This is kind of an overview of it, and I'll give you kind of a primitive shot of it, too. Is there another time for this? Huh? Do you have another time for this, or is it still under? No, they're, you know, no, they're just heading down. The last time I gave you, I think, was 12 noon, right? Yep. They stopped and visited with the, 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 the Catholic sisters. So, this is a more of a map style picture here. It's got some details we're going to talk about. But it's smart on the head. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is Daily Plaza. Now, take the lecture. You can kind of keep track of this. Might be giving you some extra to if you do just toss them on the table. Handouts here. This last one I'm giving you gives you a really good idea of what this sort of looked like if you take a look at this. You can see President Kennedy here, Jackie here, Governor Connolly here, Mrs. Connolly here, and then you can see it's kind of a it's kind of a from the driver's side. Who is this? Kellerman, and then who would be over here? You can't see him. Greer. Who do you think this would be? Either, uh, either Bobby Hargis or James Cheney, okay, right? Actually, it's James Cheney, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, so with these maps in front of you, keep in mind, if you look at this, what they're doing is they're coming from here, where this dotted line is, down, this is Main Street, right here, okay? So just keep in mind, let's just say they're right here as we continue the lecture, right here. They're coming down Main Street, okay? Well, when the motorcade reached Houston Street, do you see Houston Street on the map I gave you? It, it took what kind of a turn? Right turn. And was heading toward a building known as the Texas School Book Depository. So when the motorcade reached the end of Main Street, now did Main Street, I shouldn't say the end, did Main Street continue? Okay, we're going to explain. Because somebody's probably going to ask, well, why did they turn? But we'll explain that. So when it reached Main Street, the motorcade turned right. And once they turned right, they were heading towards a building called the Texas School Book Depository. And what that is, is simply a warehouse that supplied textbooks to schools across the South. So if Alabama High School wanted 25 U.S. history books and ordered them, they would be, they would, the order would be sent to the Texas School Book Depository, they would package up the books and then send them to that school. That's what the building was for. Okay? So when the motorcade reached Houston Street, the parade took a right turn toward the Texas School Book Depository, which was a warehouse that supplied textbooks to schools across the South. Now, at 2.29 p.m., while they're traveling on Houston Street, what, do they, what building do they pass? Dallas County Courthouse. 
So at 12.29 p.m., after traveling on Houston Street for a very short distance, the presidential limousine passes the Dallas County Courthouse. And you can see an arrow that points to the route off of that, can you not? When the limousine was where that arrow was on your sheet, Mrs. Connolly turned around and said to, Ms. said to President Kennedy, quote, Mr. President, you can't say that Dallas doesn't love you. So just because they were pleased with the crowds, did they have any negative connotations the entire time through? Anybody spitting at them? Anybody protest signs? Nothing. From Love Field to that point, there wasn't an issue, not a negative issue on the president. Crowds flowing into the streets, people cheering. And Mrs. Connolly was quite pleased. And so at 12.29, when they reached that point on Houston Street, she turns to President Kennedy and says, quote, Mr. President, you can't say that Dallas doesn't love you. Her point being is that Dallas is a friendly place where you come. Despite the things you were worried about, Dallas is good, okay? Well, they travel the rest of that one block and they take a left turn onto... Elm Street. Okay, they turned left on Elm Street. Now, let me ask you a question. See if you can figure this out. Why the turn on Elm instead of just going down Main? Because something's going to happen on Elm Street pretty quick here that's going to change the course of American history. Why didn't they just go on Main Street? Anybody want to guess? Say it, because you're going to say it. People, there's not, we don't have people right here. Okay, actually, that's a good.